Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at implicit differentiation, unit 5.2. Now, some equations that you come across are very difficult to arrange it in the form of like y equals f of x, or even x equals f of y. So what we need to do is we need to have a way of differentiating equations that are in terms of both x and y without having to rearrange them. And that's what implicit differentiation is all about. Now, it comes from the chain rule, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you by example, as that's probably the easiest way to understand it quickly. Or if not understand it, at least be able to do it. So here's my first example, and I want to find dy by dx. And the way I go ahead now, I'm just going to rewrite this out here before we start. Just a little bit bigger, so it's nice and clear. So I'm going to differentiate each term in term. So differentiating x to the power 5, this is going to be 5x to the power 4. Remember that you're multiplied by the power and then take 1 away from the power. Then we've got 3x squared, so it's going to give me 6x. Now I get to the y. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. So the first step, if you remember this, it'll become quite easy. You just differentiate this as if you're differentiating it with x. So it's going to become 3y squared. 3y squared. And then multiplied by dy by dx. And if you remember just how to do that, these will be really easy. So differentiate, because we're differentiating um, with respect to x, differentiate the same as you would with all the x's, but then multiply by dy by dx. Now, when I've got an x multiplied by y, this is obviously a product rule. So I'm going to take this off to the side. So we've got our x times y. So I want u is x and v is y, du by dx is going to be 1, dv by dx is dy by dx. Because if I differentiate y, I get dy by dx. And then remember, it's going to be these two multiplied together plus these two multiplied together. So we get x dy by dx, so plus x dy by dx plus and then we got one times y so just y equals and then when I differentiate one I would just get zero now if you look at it we've got a lot of terms but we've actually got two terms that contain dy by dx now those terms I want on their own so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take extra steps that I probably wouldn't normally but I'm just going to separate out these two terms that contain dy by dx and everything else I'm going to send to the other side of the equals. So we get minus 5x to the power 4 minus 6x minus y. So those are the three terms are the other side of the equals now. Next thing to do now is to factorise out the dy by dx. Now, you may notice sometimes that there are some other bits you can factorise out, but don't. You just want to factorise out the dy by dx. Obviously, in this case, that's all I could factorise out anyway. And then finally, I divide by this bracket. So I get dy by dx equals minus 5x to the power 4 minus 6x minus y over 3y squared plus x. And that's it. Done. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too difficult. Let's uh, have a look at another example and see how you guys get on. So in this example, we need to find an equation of a tangent, which obviously means that we need to find the gradient at this point. So first I want to start with just writing down 
my equation and taking the y up onto the top line. And then I want to differentiate implicitly. So starting with my 6xy. Now, 6xy is a, obviously a product. They're multiplied together. So now when I split these up, it actually doesn't matter which where, which term I put the 6 with. Okay, I can put it with the x or I could put it with the y. It makes no difference. Okay, because these two are going to be multiplied together, these two are going to be multiplied together. Okay, so if I put the 6 over here, it's still going to end up with the right term. So they're still going to work out. Now, just remember, 6x differentiates the 6, y differentiates the dy by dx. Now, going back to what we've got here, we've got now 6x dy by dx plus 6y minus, and then we've got to bring the 2 down, multiply by the 2 and take 1 away from the power. So it's going to give me 8x to the power 1. And then with this one, multiply by the minus 1 and take 1 away from the power. So that's going to become minus 2y to the minus 2. And then don't forget to multiply by dy by dx. And the 11 will become 0. Now, my next step again is all about getting dy by dx on its own. And in cases like this, where one's negative, one's positive, and keep them both on this side or take them both to the other side, I just want to look at the other terms because it's nicer to keep at least some positive terms or a positive term to start with on one side. That's what you like to do. So let's keep them on the same side. And I'm going to take the negative 8x, that's going to become 8x minus 6y. Okay, if I did them the other way around, I would end up with basically the same thing, just the opposite signs, um, but it would be equivalent. So let's factorize out the dy by dx. So it gives me 6x minus 2. I'm going to put this one over y squared now. 8x minus 6y. Then dy by dx is 8x minus 6y over 6x minus 2 over y squared and that's essentially done now i can make this a little bit nicer however if i was doing this type of question where i'm finding the tangent i wouldn't bother trying to make this a little bit prettier so to speak because all i'm doing is substituting the number in so yeah i can do a little bit more with it but like i said i'm not going to bother so let's substitute the coordinate 1, 1 in. So at 1, 1, dy by dx is 8 lots of 1 minus 6 lots of 1 over 6 lots of 1 minus 2 over 1 squared. Notice how you need both the x and the y value from the coordinates this time, whereas previously when you've done these types of questions, You've just needed the x value. Now on the top we got 8 minus 6 is 2. And on the bottom we got 6 minus 2 which is 4. So my gradient here is a half. And it's a tangent so that is the gradient that we want. So m is a half and my coordinate is 1 1. And you should know this by now. But y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Now, I do like to, when we have a fraction, get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to multiply through by 2. And then that will leave me just an x minus 1 on the right. I'm going to take everything to the right. So x minus 2y. And then when I add 2, it'll give me plus 1. And of course, that equals 0. 
Okay, and there we have it. Hopefully watching the examples has made it easier for you to see just how easy it is to do this type of differentiation. Um, of course, they'll pop a few questions up and go through the answers at the end. So feel free to skip to some of the ones at the end if you want a bit more examples. And I did make one of them a little bit harder than you probably would get. So on question three, feel free to stop at the gradient. So if you find the gradient um, as an exact value, feel free to stop at that point if you want to. And don't forget, if you found the video useful, just give us a, a like, really helps me out. Um, feel free to comment down below if you want to ask any questions or curious about anything. And of course, if you have been watching my channel for a while but haven't subscribed, just please consider subscribing as it does go a long way to helping these videos get to other people. Thank you.